And a Fox News alert is North Korea has launched its second ballistic missile over Japan, obviously striking fear among residents as it crossed over the northern part of the country and landed in the Pacific Ocean. It happened very early this morning, Japan time, just days after the United Nations Security Council unanimously voted for more sanctions on the regime of Kim Jong-un. Kim Jong-un not very happy about that. And the Security Council has scheduled an emergency meeting at 3 p.m. today. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson releasing a statement, quote, these continued provocations only deepen North Korea's diplomatic and economic isolation. Joining us now, Admiral Robert Natter, retired U.S. Navy four-star admiral who commanded the Navy's 7th Fleet that was based in Japan. Uh, nice to see you, sir. Uh, at least so far, it appears as though Kim Jong-un doesn't really care about being more diplomatically and economically isolated, as the Secretary of State uh, put it. That said... The U.S. has missile defense capabilities. The Japanese have missile defense capabilities in Japan. Why not try and shoot this missile down as a response to the North Koreans? Well, for one thing, Leland, uh, the trajectory of this particular missile shot uh, was not a threat to Japan. Uh, something like a uh, Patriot missile site or a THAAD uh, would not have uh, an opportunity to shoot this in its terminal phase. Uh, Aegis ashore would provide more capability, uh, and uh, that certainly is a, a a system that many that other countries are looking at, uh, but for this particular shot, uh, it was not a threat to Japan based on its trajectory. No, noteworthy, you talk about Aegis destroyers. There's a couple of the Aegis destroyers that are offline right now because they ran aground or ran into another ship or have other issues. So that's something that the Seventh Fleet is dealing with. Big picture, though. What does it tell you that so far Secretary Mattis and President Trump have not ordered the forward deployment of B-2 bombers? They've not ordered uh, reinforcements for the 7th Fleet to steam toward Japan and then aircraft carriers off of North Korea. What does it tell you that largely the sort of position of U.S. forces hasn't changed despite everything North Korea has done? Well, I think uh, the United States leadership is trying mightily not to uh, escalate this thing into a military confrontation, because there will be no winners if there is a military confrontation. Uh, no winners counting the United States of America. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're trying to control this, they're trying to uh, deal with it, but also I think you mentioned uh, the mobility of United States Navy forces and uh, our military forces in general. Uh, there is no doubt that the uh, Navy can move as many forces into the area as we need to to handle the threat, and uh, there, there are uh, options to do that. A lot has been made about the distance that this missile flew, that it was almost the exact same distance as from North Korea to Guam, where the U.S. puts uh, so much of its Pacific forces and also that air base with the B-1 bombers there. Uh, I'm guessing that that distance, in your opinion, was it a coincidence? Oh, I would think not. And what this really tells us that uh, Kim Jong-un is uh, gradually and very quickly developing uh, increased capability with the uh, uh, range capability uh, and the ability to handle a uh, miniaturized nuclear weapon on its missile systems. This is going pretty quickly, uh, and there's no doubt that it's uh, becoming a real threat to us and our allies. Well, and, and as you note, uh, quite the game of brinksmanship going on. Uh, and then we'll have the war of words at the U.N. over the next couple of days as President Trump uh, comes to New York to speak to the U.N. Uh, Admiral Natter, appreciate your time and your expertise, sir. Thank you. Lady. Have a great weekend.